In this lecture, we're going to be looking at the reapportionment and redistricting that is done within Congress. And ultimately what that is called is going to be gerrymandering. Um, but reapportionment and redistricting are two terms that, that oftentimes get confused within the election process of Congress and the apportionment of our representatives. Uh, but they are two things that need to be distinguished between. So as we go through this, make sure you pay attention to the differences between reapportionment, redistricting, and gerrymandering. First, every 10 years, there is a census that is completed. Currently, we are in that uh, in 2020. Um, so by a certain date, I can't remember when that date is, your parents have to have filled out uh, a census and are encouraged to fill out that census because uh, what this does is gives an accurate count of the amount of people that live within a certain state or a certain area. Oftentimes this can have other effects, like it can help or hurt the amount of funding that a state gets or um, could increase the likelihood of a, a project being done or whatever. Um, just the other day I was driving home and I saw a, a car sitting outside of my neighbor's house and I was like, that you know, kind of seemed a little weird. And uh, the guy had a sticker on that said the U.S. Census. Um, so basically, those people that have not filled this this uh, census out, um, they are sending people. The government is sending people out to collect this data from people because we need to know how many people are in a certain area uh, or a certain state or county. So once the census is done, um, and we have an idea of the amount of people that are in a given state. The federal government would, will do what is called reapportionment. Um, reapportionment is when we take the 435 representatives and we allocate them to the 50 states. Currently, the this is only done in the House of Representatives. This does not apply to the Senate. Um, the Senate, remember, has two seats per state. So there is no change every 10 years. The House of Representatives is the only one that changes as a result of the census in or every 10 years. So these 435 representatives, that number does not change. What does change is the amount that each state can get. So in Kentucky, we have six representatives. That six could increase to eight if we see an influx of roughly 1.2 million people coming to the state of Kentucky, very unlikely that that actually happens. But if a lot of people leave Ohio, let's say, and move into Kentucky, they could reapportion one of those representatives from Ohio and move that number to Kentucky. So it would increase our chances, or it would increase our number of representatives in our state uh, and decrease the number of representatives in Ohio that does not move that representative. We would have to uh, look at electing a different representative. So at the federal level, we reapportion that 435 to the 50 states somehow, some way. Obviously some states like California, New York, and Texas are going to have a higher amount of representatives because they have a higher amount of people. Uh, places like Wyoming, where you have more cows than people, are going to have maybe one representative. So we reapportion that number. The number in the House of Representatives is always 435 and it will never change. And the 50 states will, will get some sort of a portion or portion of that particular number. Once the state has received the amount of representatives or gotten the idea of how many representatives they are going to do, or have the state is responsible for, the state legislature is responsible for redistricting. So they will actually draw the district lines that a representative is responsible for um, speaking for in, in Congress. So I'll have some examples here in a little bit and show you what um, nationally it looks like, what, can, what Texas looks like and what Kentucky looks like. Um, most of the time we try to do what is called nonpartisan redistricting where we do not look at it from the standpoint of who's voting for who um, or we or by race or by gender, whatever. Uh, most of the time we just do it geographically by county lines. That is how K Kentucky has done it. Um, and these seats tend to be more competitive. Um, there's more of a chance that certain uh, congressmen might lose a seat or 
um, you know, it, they have to, to do more to protect their seat in terms of reelection. Um, so reapportionment, just to kind of review this again, reapportionment is done at the federal level. Redistricting is done at the state level. So we reallocate the number from the, the 435 to the states and then the states redraw the district lines. What happens though, oftentimes is the state legislatures will do what's called gerrymandering. And that is where they are going to redraw the election boundaries to give themselves a better um, chance to win the seat. So if the state legislature, we'll use Kentucky for an example, if the state legislature in Kentucky is Republican, there is a potential that instead of just doing it based, redrawing the lines or redistricting based on geography and counties, they could draw district lines based on voter registration. Um, there have been cases that have limited the, the ability of the, the state legislatures to do this, but what the state legislature would be trying to do is increase the likelihood that Republican candidates would be sent to Congress out of the state of Kentucky and not Democratic candidates. So gerrymandering involves the redrawing of election district boundaries to maximize the number of legislative seats that can be won by a political party. So the way this works, you have reapportionment at the federal level, you have redistricting at the state level. Redistricting, another example, is gerrymandering where you redistrict to try and favor one political party or race or group of people. The easiest way to explain this is by looking at this section here. If a district is drawn like this with a line right down the middle, um, you would have A and B each winning one seat. So you would have A winning this seat because it's roughly 40% A, 10% B, and you would have B winning this seat because it is 50% B. What they would do at the basic level is change the way they draw it. So instead of drawing the line this way, they draw the line this way, and that way make sure that B wins two seats instead of one. So that is essentially what they are trying to do when it comes to gerrymandering. If you look at the state of Kentucky, um, the state of Kentucky is drawn with six districts in mind. Like I said, we are much more, um, much more uh, fair in terms of us being in um, a geographic location and not so much drawn by politics. Um, you see the smallest district in Kentucky is actually Jefferson County, and that is the city of Louisville. Uh, the largest district is probably uh, either District 1 or District 5 in terms of the amount of counties. And again, if you look at District 5, there are a lot of uh, coal mining uh, counties down there, a lot of blue collar counties, as opposed to some of the needs of maybe District 4, which is Boone, Kenton, Campbell, uh, Northern Kentucky, urban suburban area. So we have drawn it this way. Um, if for some reason the 2020 census indicates that we are supposed to have an additional um, representative, then we will have to go to a blank drawing board once again and redraw those lines to make sure that there's roughly the same number of people per representative in the state of Kentucky. So that could mean that we're changing district four and adding something to district six or whatever. So there's a lot of things that could be redistricted at the state level once the reapportionment happens from the federal level. Here's an example of the state of Texas. Uh, so you look at certain areas like Houston, San Antonio, El Paso, they are much more um, broken up than some of the areas that might be more ranches and, and farmland like in District 23 or District 17. Um, so this one, it shows you where the population is living, um, but also it shows you like how they have to redistrict in an area that is heavily populated to make sure that those same numbers so of people are represented. So in, in district seven, you have roughly the same amount of people living in district seven as you do in district 23. Uh, there is one representative that is responsible for district 23. There's another representative that is responsible for district seven or district nine. So they are much more, again, attached to the people, as we've said before. So there's a, a smaller portion of people that they are smaller area, geographic area of people that they have to represent. 
but roughly the same number of people that they are responsible to. If for some reason, Texas sees an increase in population, all of these lines go away and the state legislature in Texas is going to redraw those based on the allocated number of representatives that the Congress gives them based on the census. Nationally, you can see um, how it looks um, across the country and this will change this year, uh, but you can see places like Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, they don't have any district lines. That's because they don't have enough people there to receive a second number or second representative. So they get one representative in the House of Representatives. Idaho has two. So they'll have district one and district two. But you go to something like New York and you can see very, very clearly that New York City is going to be drawn much differently than New York State. Even though it's within the same state, a lot of the representatives are coming from the city of New York rather than the upstate New York. These are just some examples of districts that have been gerrymandered. Um, and, and this is redistricting that's done with the intent of trying to win the district uh, for a political party or a race or gender. Um, in this particular case, in almost all of these, you can see how they've redrawn this in a way that is just like almost street by street, party by party. Um, looking at it and saying, well, this, this street is typically more Republican or this street is typically more Democrat. So we're going to loop these people together instead of looping these people together, or we're going to loop this person with this person instead of this person with this person, because it's going to give our, our, our party or our race uh, that we're looking to represent a little bit better opportunity to have that representation in Congress. So this is just the example. This is a political cartoon that has shown up. And I just show you this because it could come out um, on an AP exam or something. But this, if you see this, they are talking about gerrymandering. Um, and the guy by the last name of, um, I think it's Eldred Gary. Um, he was in New York and he was the first one to really do this. Uh, and this was the district that was drawn. So this was a political cartoon that ties to gerrymandering often. So if you do see it, uh, I show you this just for reference, uh, nothing necessarily that you would have to have. Okay, that is all. Um, big thing is just to remember that there is an element of federalism to congressional apportionment. Reapportionment happens at the federal level, redistricting happens at the state level, and then gerrymandering is just simply looking at this and saying, um, we're doing this with the intent of trying to um, favor our party or a certain race in terms of their representation. This can be a very difficult topic. So if you have questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me um, because I know that this is something that would be a very good FRQ or very good uh, long essay question. So this is something that we should definitely make sure that we understand moving forward.